Hello, welcome to The Health In Show, an affiliate program of Homeopathy World Community. You've come to the right place to tune in and participate with your comments and questions. Love is the greatest healer of all, but sometimes, in order to change our emotions, we must take action in other spheres of our lives. We speak with experts in alternative and complementary health fields and hope you will benefit in some small or great way. Remember, you are wherever your thoughts are. Make sure your thoughts are where you want to be. Good morning. This is Debbie Brock, founder of Homeopathy World Community. We're going to be speaking with Lise Battaglia, CCH of Florida. And I hope everyone has been getting the messages that we've been sending out on Facebook and Twitter, on wherever you are, emails and press releases, because we put a little bit of effort into getting you to join us today and participate in this discussion. We want to hear your voices. And so I will give you a little bit of an introduction to this beautiful person who is extremely active in the health and homeopathic community. I consider her a leader. She lives in Port Orange, Florida, and has a website called homeopathyhealingarts.com. And she started out as a crisis counselor, which is what we really do need today, and we know homeopathy helps with that way back in 1981. So um, she has quite a bit of experience. And if you go to Homeopathy World Community, there is an entire bio all about Lise and all the different lives she's lived um, besides being a crisis counselor and a member of Columbia University's Barnard College counseling pro Women's Counseling Project. Um, she probably could fill us in more of whatever she would like to talk to us about herself, but I want to say that she's a chef. One day she's going to cook me a meal, I hope. <laughs> and so that it, love of food is very, very popular today and has probably brought her into the nutrition field and the most uh, overriding issue today about gut health and the microbiome. What does it say? Natural Gourmet Cookery School with Anne Marie Colbin, Healing Meals, Personal Chef, and Food for Healing. So she had a very uh, extensive schooling and education in food and went right into the GAPS protocol. She's a certified educator. She's got so many certifications, it blows my mind, of what she wants to learn and teach and heal others, which is what we're here for, for forgiving and being good to each other. She studied with many of the world-class homeopaths, Lou Klein, Rajan Sankaran, Robin Murphy, we'll hear more about that, Jan Scholten, and Dr. Ramakrishnan. And she is currently in practice as a homeopathic and integrative healthcare consultant. So she, this is a, a big point of what she does. How many other homeopaths you know are teaching at a college? So she teaches Intro to Homeopathy for Medical Professionals at Daytona State College in Florida. And um, she's also working with vaccine-free homeopathic immune support. So a lot of the parents who are concerned about their kids want to know that. And the biggest of all, at least how I learned about Lise was through the botch flower essences, and she is a certified practitioner. So, Lise, if I've missed anything, I probably have in your long, extensive career. Um, I'm going to let you talk to us a little bit, and maybe throughout this hour, we'll integrate some healing words, healing inspiration. Um, thoughts about whatever messages have come into this present moment. Okay. Lise, can so you... Oh, great to see you back on the radio. I know everyone who I mentioned that we were going to be doing this show was saying, Debbie, she's back on the radio. This is great news. Um, 
you've been a missed, your presence has been missed in the community. And I'm very, very honored to be one of your first guests as you recreate your, um, your presence on the radio. So thank you. And namaste. <laughs> <laughs> So, so that's the mutual admiration society aside. <laughs> yes. Uh, I would love to make you a meal someday. Uh, so how, how, how would you like to begin, Tim? Um, well, we have a, already a little note on the chat, and we do want folks to know that they can participate, and I will be checking in on the chat on comments and questions. Kathy's saying, is this live? Is this happening right now? And yes, it is. You are... <laughs> you are participating by being there in the chat. Um, if you are getting a recorded archive, then you need to probably refresh your page. Uh, no, you don't have to. You don't have to refresh your page. We are here and it's broadcasting to you. This is, today is February 18th, 2016. I forgot to mention that at the beginning of the show. And um, in the future, our shows will be announced because we're not absolutely defining a regular scheduled date and time. Fairy Mom, hello. Giza, Kathy Lemon, Burrow, I don't know who you are. And Melinda, you're a new person to me also. Thank you for joining us. And Gabriella, Giza was not allowed, so I'm here with Gabrielle. Okay. Let me, let me just explain to you. Okay. Giza, you must have came in, signed in as Giza, and went somewhere and came back you will not be allowed to use the name again that's that's why you can come in and the other thing is if you are on other parts in other parts of the world you'll <laughs> see under the video there's channel one two three four and five if you don't get good video on one try another channel that's all yes thank you amna nissan show producer extraordinaire and we need to hear his voice tune in because he loves homeopathy as well. He's a health nut, just like I am. I'm very healthy now. <laughs> yes, you will be there. And we also need his technical expertise. So um, I also want to mention that I often listen to the shows on my iPhone. And you can do that. When I do, I click the audio only. Or you can listen to us through Stitcher or iTunes. Right? And if they want to watch it, they need to click. It'll come automatically, actually. Okay. All right. And if you want to call in and say hello, we have a number, 919-518-9773 in the USA or via Skype at computers, the number 2, the letter K, and the word voice. You'll see that information at the top of the screen if you're on the Internet right now. So hello, um, Gabrielle, Maggie, Pam. We've got people uh, tuning in with us. So anything you want to say, any inspiration for today, we want to hear it. Okay, Lise, back yes, to you. Abby. <laughs> yes, Abby. <laughs> so how would you like us to begin? We have so many things we, decide, we talked about talking about, so I'd like to... Uh-huh. Well, why don't we go ahead with... Um, do you want to... Tell me what inspiration you had today. Well, Debbie and I were talking about um, what's been going on in Florida because I'm living in Florida for about three years now and have been really overwhelmed by the homeopathic talent down here and um, the things that happen here. It's, you know, it turns out that Florida is one of the biggest meccas in the world for conferences, so it's natural that even homeopaths come here to gather. Um, and we're having, and as a member of the Florida Homeopathic Society, I'm on the board, we're having a conference this weekend. So maybe we should begin with that? Sounds good. Yes, let's um, talk about all the things that are happening in Florida. Would you like to put up the um, screen for the conference information? Oh yes, that's a funny, that's, we, we were trying to be funny. Everyone calls Florida God's waiting room, um, but we want God to wait a little longer, all due respect. Um, so we're using homeopathy to age well. And it's, it's quite amazing when you hear someone who's just had a hip replacement, for example, and with a little arnica and hypericum, within a couple of months they're on the tennis court again. And these are the kinds of stories we hear down here. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you think of Florida is the old age retirement center. And, you know, people are sensitive to the cold up in the north and they are drawn down to the sunny Florida where you are shining your light upon us, reflecting the sun. And it really makes them feel good, but they're also like, it's the geriatric crowd and every day they see another doctor. Oh, please, it's, 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 it is one of the biggest pastimes around here. <laughs> pastime, okay. Well, um, yes, and it's, it's true, it's kind of sad because we want to uh, improve the health of all ages, including um, the seniors in our community. And so having botch flower remedies, oil essences, herbs, better nutrition, all of these things, plus homeopathy, uh, we need to be able to get that information out to the public and out to other healing pr professionals. So, and it's, really, and it's wonderful that you know you're you're opening up the show with this particular topic because this is a good way to do that. And um, we are we're bringing down. We're very honored to be bringing down Robin Murphy to um, present Aging Well with Homeopathy for um, Floridians. This coming, we start Friday night, we go through Sunday, and we're having a free screening and Q&A with the director of The Magic Pills, Ananda Moore, as well. So even if people didn't sign up for the conference and they wanted to come and hang out with other homeopaths or homeopathic students um, and view the film, it would be wonderful. Everyone is welcome. And it's at the Marriott Courtyard in Lake Nona, Orlando, which is a new hotel. It's um, being touted as a green hotel. And um, Deepak Chopra actually um, had something to do with creating the room. So it's very green, very holistic. You mean Deepak Chopra was um, instrumental in creating the environment in the room? Wow. Yep. Yep. So he's, he's an got interior got decorator. <laughs> <laughs> and everything else. And everything else. He's on everything. He's everywhere. I don't know. I... <laughs> They've got these clocks that oh, oh, uh, turn on. The light The light on the clock helps act as an alarm. So it's as the, almost like the sun rising is supposed to wake you up naturally. Oh, They've got yes. That happening. I know. And they've got aromatherapy in the rooms. And it's kind of fun. And when we scheduled our time being there, Andrea Baines, our, um, our event, our, really, she's been facilitating the entire space and location for us. She's amazing. She's also on the board, and she's on the Wellness Council of Florida. Um, she's, uh, she got them to give us a room and the, the, the setup before they even finished building the hotel. So we're one of the first uh, conferences there. Okay, so um, this is good. We're, we're really thrilled to have you giving this uh, presentation and telling us about all of the activities that are happening all in one month, and I know that you've been working really hard to make that happen um, because you've been instrumental in all of these events. Uh, we were put, tell us what slides you would like us to be putting up. Let's put up the, um, the second one or the third one, which should be the one that has the actual conference information and then uh, website address for Florida Homeopathic Society. Yeah, I think we had that. We, we had that one up for a while while you were talking yeah. about it, right? Oh, okay. Oh, okay, this one is a new one. This one that's, is Aging that's Well. One. That's it. Okay. That's it. And the website is there, so folks still want it. We still have some seats left, but we're pretty packed. Um... I'd like to encourage anyone who's already in Florida to stop by because Miranda Castro's got a table with um, her products, as well mm -hmm. as Robin Murphy's bringing a lot of his products, his books, his tapes, his videotapes, his classes. Um, so it's actually going to be a place where you can come out and congregate with other homeopaths and get information so you can learn more about homeopathy, um, as well as the this is the nine or ten CEU credits that are eligible for homeopaths as well as acupuncturists. So all acupuncturists, they come to the conference, they can get CEU credits as well. 
But this brings up another topic for us. Do you mind, if, Deb, if we talk about just how the integrative community is starting to embrace homeopathy a little bit more down here? Did you cover all of the different conferences that you no. wanted to? No, you want to no. hold yeah. that off. Okay. Well, yeah, we can talk about, because that one, the last one to talk about is the following week, the last weekend of February, mm -hmm. and that might take up a little more conversation time. Okay. So, Would you agree um, with that? Yeah, okay, so giving tell me... Everyone, to, giving everyone the heads up that something's coming down the line. Yeah, we have a whole... You have so much <laughs> happening. So tell me again what you wanted to talk about. I was wondering if we could just take a moment and acknowledge, because I think acknowledge what's actually positively happening in the homeopathic world for us. I think a lot of homeopaths um, sort of hunger for someone to talk to about homeopathy, not just your your practitioner, not just another student, but actually somebody who can share in the love of the benefit that homeopathy can play in a holistic health paradigm. Um, mm -hmm. So we've sort of been in the shadows for a long time. How many times have people said to you, homeo what? Um, and I have good news. This is changing. Um, there are two, in, in October, well, in August of last year, the International Healthcare Symposium, uh, who's very closely aligned this, these past two years with um, Dr. Perlmutter in Hollywood, Florida, and his whole microbiome project, the leaky gut, healthy gut, brain, gra uh, brain, grain, brain, and those, those, those sorts of um, ideas, some of which he's written and researched, um, they invited the Florida Homeopathic Society to participate in their conference as a partner. Mm -hmm. They sought out homeopaths to make right. sure that in their symposium, we, our modality was represented. I think this is a big deal. It is a big deal when someone is requesting homeopathic input, homeopathic care, and seeking homeopaths for self-care. Um, it is a change in the way people are thinking, taking responsibility of their own health care. They are not going the traditional route. Um, perhaps they have already done that, and now they want to see some different kinds of results. This is very true on the consumer level. What was m remarkable about this particular invitation was that the, con that the conventional practitioners wanted homeopathy at the table. That is phenomenal. I, I have not heard that before. I, I have not heard that regular um, conventional physicians are looking for input from, I mean, we, we hear a lot about functional medicine today. Uh, we hear about naturopaths and chiropractors, <clears throat> but I don't know that we hear anything about homeopaths except considerable amount of negative input. At least, I don't know whether it's sensitivity to that or it's actually there or we don't have enough input from homeopaths in the community that are putting out vibes of good information. I, what do you think about that? Well, it's a great question, and I, and I think you, you and I, Deb, got involved in homeopathy probably around the same time, 1980s, 1990s. Was that the time that you sort of learned about homeopathy? 1988. 1988. I was 27 in 1988. Oops, I just told my age. And that was the first time I had a homeopathic consultation. 27. Yeah. I had, and, and it was, I, it's a story I tell in my classes. But I think we've all been through the, the experience of, wow, homeopathy, who's, what's not to love? And then all of a sudden, no one talks to you because nobody knows what you're talking about. And then, we've, then we become more bold in our conversation about it. And then we attract, then the homeopathy has attracted naysayers because, well, we don't have to get into the politics of it. But homeopathy is an inexpensive self-care modality that doesn't require a lot of attention and medical intervention so all the people that benefit from that aren't that interested in what we do mm -hmm. um, and so we're always sort of on the outside we're off a lot of confusion about what homeopathy means um, a lot of people think it's home remedies and we just have to keep I mean I think that 
we just have to keep talking about it and talking about it with a sense of pride and not really focusing on how people are hearing it sometimes. Sometimes we just have to keep telling the truth. I think the beautiful thing about homeopathy is the more you tell the truth about it, the more you tell stories about how it works and people have the courage to speak up and say, well, it worked for me. And there are um, website sort of um, programs Home where people saying me. homeopathy helped, how, how homeopathy helped me. These are very helpful. You know, I think people have to be exposed to a new idea about 18 times before they take it, they take action on it. Mm -hmm. Is it 17 or 18? <laughs> <laughs> okay, 17, but I, don't be surprised if it's 18, right? Uh-huh. Uh, I, I don't know the exact number. Um, so well, the question we asked was, what do, what do I think about the fact that it's now being talked about in a better way? And I think it's just a growth. It's just a learning curve. Maybe it's a paradigm shift. People are more upset about the things that haven't been working, so have a greater motivation to to find something else. And right. we're lucky because all we have to do is tell the truth about what, we, what our experience has been. Um, I was telling you uh, earlier that um, I try and live in the present, mm -hmm. and I try and listen to messages that I am receiving. Okay. And um, I listen to a lot of blogs and streaming in. So I think that's one of the great things about having this show. You mentioned to me that you could put it in the background and listen. You can listen to the archives of what has been recorded in the past. You have an, <clears throat> an option of actually tuning in live. Um, what I was hearing this morning was I was learning about, and I'm going to show you a picture, kombucha. <laughs> oh my God! This is my homemade kombucha. Oh, wow! We got it together. Um, Look, I've got ES here. ESP. Here's my scopey. You see the scope? Can you see the scopey? Looks good. That's my scopey. Look at this. Okay, there it is. It's, it's a beautiful scopey. Okay, so I was scopey hotel. I was <laughs> I was listening to um, an expert in creating kombucha and teaching and everything else, and basically learning, hearing the word networking. Hearing the word that it creates a network, it forms a filament, there's fungi, um, how it fills in, the communication, talking with the bacteria, how this is nutritional to um, who we are. Com we're composed of so many, uh, 400, 40,000, 40, how much? 40 of which? Million? Of my bacteria? 40, or tri my 40, 40 trillion bacteria. 40 trillion bacteria. Yeah, there's more bacteria in, in, us in, in our body. And, and then I think we're on the net. We're interacting across the world. We are one humanity. And uh, I think that the um, what I'm getting at is the homeopathic community in itself, in herself, is a network of people who are connected through the homeopathic philosophy, the homeopathic way of thinking, uh, which is completely different, I think, from other ways of thinking. It's living in harmony with the environment. It's a symbiotic relationship. And what I'm, I would like to put out there in my filament way, <laughs> a, 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 a strand, a thought, um, an invitation to folks out there to really come in, tune in, and speak out, to, to be a participant in this voice, this platform, which I thank Amnon for, and which I thank you for so much for bringing it back alive. Because, you know, um, you can put that SCOBY in the closet for a year. <laughs> it's still alive, and it just needs to be fed a little bit. We need to feed the homeopathic community nutrition, dietary nutrition, but emotional, mental, intellectual nutrition to help them grow. And I think uh, this is part of what your intent is as an expert chef who loves <laughs> delicious tastes. And because, you know, I, I, I just went to put a little notice on Twitter to say, come join us. This is where we're having a show. 
and you put a hashtag up, and I was putting hashtag homeopathy because I wanted to be broadcast that way and connected with all the other homeopathy messages. Uh, I received a, a, a not nice um, mm. drop down because it automates your hashtags. Right. I, I'm even afraid to say what it said. Wow. <laughs> um, and I said, oh my gosh, that's not really happening. We need to change the paradigm. We need to get our good homeopathy hashtag up there for That's interesting. for people That's for people to see. So I, I'm asking people to be active. Start bubbling. Start, you know, making the carbonation, fermenting, doing whatever to to make a better community environment for ourselves. Wow, Deb, that's a mouthful. And I'll tell you, the the, the relationship between bacteria, cultures and community has is not is not hard to, to, to identify. It's very much what you're talking about. Um, bacteria will communicate from one continent to bacteria on another continent. So it's a great metaphor for the culture. Of course, fermented foods, cultured foods, or, or bacteria foods. Um, it's a, it's sort of a natural out. It's sort of a natural um, parallel. And I love that you brought it up. And anything we can do to, to foster greater, greater experiences of homeopathy? You know, it's funny. We can, what, did, what, did, what did Mother Teresa say? She says she's not against a war. She's for peace. And the idea that we talk about the things that are working, the things that, like I would say, are the truth in, in our experience, is better than talking about the, the folks that are saying it's not true. Because you, what you put your attention on expands. This is a law that, that is a spiritual law that has found its um, scientific proof in physics and, and, and in, in um, particle physics. And we can pretty much understand that what we focus on expands. So let's focus on the stuff that we, the message we want to bring and not the, the naysayers who we're trying to refute. Thank you very much. So, um, are there other messages that you would like to impart to sure. our listeners? Sure. Um, after our wonderful experience of oh. integrative health, Three. yes. Okay, we have a message. A message from our producer to move your video, live video stream to channel five. Oh. Something probably lost connection. Yeah. Okay, switch to channel five under the video image, okay? Yep. Uh, I guess we just lost connection. I see we have, um, I love to do uh, that m morning show with that I was brought up with and you have the wand and you're talking to the people out there in TV land. Hello, Gabrielle. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Maggie, Pam. Fairy Mom Kavitha has joined us. BB, who are you? No, that, they were there. The chat will yeah. be there the whole time. Their chat's there, they but I'm, I'm. lost. They lost their connection. They, How? They lost the video. We did. But they still had the voice? Yeah. Okay. Uh, no, they didn't. They didn't. Okay. But they're still here with us, and I don't know who BB is or Burrow. Um, Melinda, welcome. I just want to make sure that we acknowledge you and thank you so much. For being with us. Okay. Um, what are the other messages? Oh, great. We're ready to pick up again. Okay. Yeah, I didn't we're, know if we were... we're here. Oh, great. Um, um, Gabrielle has uh, something to say. Okay. Gabrielle has something to say. Okay. I had to turn my sound off. Um, Gabrielle says, I met homeopathy as the daughter of a doctor in the treatment of migraine. Conventional medicine had 10 years trying to help me with hard drugs. Homeopathy managed with a dose of a homeopathic remedy. And these are the stories that need to be out there. These are the stories that people put on YouTube that say homeopathy works for me. Um, you can make one of those little videos yourself and put them up there and just put the tagline. Let sure. people know. Share them. Share your and, stories. And, and go to, if you don't mind, go to any Facebook page that, I, I mean, whatever state you're in or country you're in, there's probably a homeopathic 
society of some type um, that you can become a, um, a fan of and tell your story because these things, they will travel. And this is the beauty of, thank God for the internet, um, there's parts about it that we don't love, but this is one of the great parts about it. Uh, Deb was asking me about any other messages we wanted to bring forth. And I just, we're, we're, again, it's been a great year in Florida for homeopathy because um, we've been getting recognition. We've been invited at the table. We've now got at least at least two um, classes being taught. Well, there's one homeopath who's at the Daytona State College faculty, and that's me as an adjunct. Um, there are classes being given in other traditional uh, educational venues such as Stetson University. They have um, a continuing education class on um, homeopathy. So it, we're creeping up, we're getting credibility, people are starting to feel more comfortable with the idea of homeopathy. And as we come into more spiritual involvement, involvement anyway, people, I think people are beginning to admit that there's more to life than what we see. So as that evolves and as that becomes more accepted, and it might be more possible in Florida because we have a lot of churches in Florida. We have a lot of religious practices in, in Florida. And the idea that we don't see everything that's in our experience. So the fact that, we, that homeopathy is a medicine that works on a quantum level, and a lot of that is untraceable, only in the past few century, on the past past few um, decades, have we been getting the ability to measure the effect of homeopathic remedies with the remedy with the memory of water and other kind of quantum measuring tools. So that sort of, is sort of helping people in general accept the conversation about homeopathy. Mm -hmm. um, so we're we're seeing more of that in evidence. The um, anti apple seed. Can cancer alternative cancer therapies conference. Um, this is our tenth. This is their tenth year, and it's in West Palm Beach. Um, they've had a homeopathic physician before, but they've invited a homeopath this year to speak about what's happening in cancer care and homeopathy. Um, it happens to be me, so I'm not trying to toot my own horn. It just happens to be in a place where I have I'm a slide for this, right? I do. I have a few slides for this. Okay. Yes, well, this is one of the major reasons you're here today, because everything's happening in February, and you're letting the folks know and announcing it. Um, the last two weeks of February, it's kind of crazy. Yes. Which, uh, you want the Apple Annie Seed Project on? That would be great. So for, for, for folks who don't know about Annie Apple Seed and want to know about it, this is um, their contact information. I think they're pretty much almost, I talked to Ann the other day, and she says they're pretty full. But getting the word out and letting people know about it would be terrific because I do think that they they have a way of people um, participating throughout the year. Uh, she has an amazing website with information about all evidence-based kinds of cancer care. Uh, it's And one of my problems, <laughs> one of my admitted, one of my weaknesses, when I see people suffering, and I, if you're on a chat forum or something and you're you're looking at some parent complaining about something or someone who's saying, but this rash never goes away or I, I, you know, I can't sleep anymore or Ambien is not doing the job anymore. The, the, the bells that go off in my head, and I'm probably not the only one, you keep wanting to shout at the Internet and say, what about homeopathy? Have you tried homeopathy? I feel like I'm a broken record when I say to say people, well, have you tried homeopathy? So one of the problems that, Deb, I think that you were referring to is it's such a different philosophy of medicine mm -hmm. that it takes a bit of work to for people to make the transition to understand how to apply it, meaning it's all about the vital force. The vital force, which is our I, kind of like our higher intelligence of order and health within our organism and I think the organism is not doesn't doesn't end here but sort of ends out here wherever our aura is or according to the different um, philosophical systems might call it the Merkaba the spiritual body um, however big that is is how big the intelligence of our or, or of our of our vital force 
So whatever is most important for the vital force will dictate the order of healing. And I think we have folks that, and we see this a lot, don't we, Deb? And especially with um, the um, cradle cap that becomes allergies, that becomes asthma in our children, which is a common problem that happens. And it happens partly because of allopathic medicines suppression of a symptom that will force a symptom deeper into the body and then when you walk then when a homeopath comes in onto the scene sometimes what was suppressed has to come out through the skin and having faith in the direction of cure which we all know about will give people enthusiasm to see a an outbreak not a dread and once people get to the point of recognizing that we heal from the inside out and from the top down, from the most serious or, uh, organs to the least serious, least dangerous, um, and in the reverse order of how we originally got sick, then people will look forward to the healing crisis because they'll understand that this is that their body's healing, not that their body's out of control or not their friend. That takes a lot of education least because most of the stories that I hear are that the parent then does some sort of a skin treatment or antibiotics or right. some kind of medication going back on that when um, there is that healing crisis, that physical manifestation of the vital force being distuned, out of tune. And so... Um, it's very, very interesting because one of the speakers on the um, on that was at the HP Hemiprophylaxis Worldwide Choice for Prevention, where um, you and I met for the first time face to face. Yeah, um, on that particular, um, there's a famous doctor. I think she, she's Russian, I believe, and. Um, when we were there, I spoke to her, and she said that the best form of homeopathy will not have these kinds of aggravations, that it will be a, tr a true smooth transition from illness to healing to being a well person in mind, body, and spirit. And I found that quite unusual because I've always believed and studied that an aggravation was expected. So this is this was kind of new to me and I and after she explained it, I don't remember what she told me, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, then uh, it made sense to me. Yeah, we really do just want to move directly into that well being. You know, it's interesting. This is a great a great topic and it's a lot about the conversation between the fifth and the sixth organon. Oh, and can how... I inter interrupt? It was Tetiana from the Ukraine because Kathy's there and she mentioned it to me. So Thank great. You, Kathy. Yeah, Tetiana is a, is, a, is a godsend for the entire community. And um, it's amazing how much, how generous she is with her time and her knowledge. We just love Tatiana. What a, what a voice of reason. And, and, and Gabriella on the chat is saying, um, doubt is the basis of failure. But you know, uh, doubt is a, is an entire hour of conversation <laughs> because we we live with doubt. It's um, how we make decisions, how we're unsure, how we might be um, confident about our, our decision making and who we are, and how everyone has doubts. So now, it, un, is fantastic, nothing is sure. This is a fantastic comment, Deb. Uh, okay. If you might, if I might just make a, just sort of put a pin in this. You and I have talked about <laughs> you and I have talked about the possibility of having chats where we sort of share techniques for dealing with these obstacles to healing, and um, these feelings of doubt and fear and insecurity and worry really impair our ability to stay the course sometimes, and that would be a great opportunity for us to have kind of a Bach troubleshooting session. Mm hmm. Well. It's part of life. It's part of the journey um, because we always have forks in the road. We always have decisions to make on a daily basis, uh, on, a, on an every moment basis sometimes. And life is unsure. 
And so we do what with it what we can on how we're feeling and our support system is very, very involved and complex. It's our network. And I probably will end up going back to our network as a theme for myself. Um, <laughs> it's a good um, metaphor. It's a great metaphor. Uh, okay, so I do know we have about 15 or no, we don't have to worry about time. But um, I know that people probably have tuned in wanting to hear something about the cancer care um, and how homeopathy is integrated in that aspect of healing. Do you want to put, up, your, you want to put up the slides? Yes. The last yeah. ones. Um, one of the things we're talking about, you know, we only have about an hour. What, the Annie Appleseed Conference is fascinating because she makes it possible for all of the practitioners to remain the whole weekend and have a lot of interaction with the folks that come to the conference. So we eat meals together, we gather together, we do yoga together, we communicate our stories and our hopes and our fears together. It's, it's an amazing little, little environment for three days. And so for me to say I'm only speaking about homeopathy for an hour is really incorrect. The presentation's an hour, but the engagement with everyone will go on the entire weekend. And I'm hoping to answer as many questions and have as many conversations to find out where people are at in their willingness and or desperation or curiosity about how to incorporate homeopathic care into their healing. And homeopathy, so what I decided to do was present kind of an overview of how homeopathy is participating in that conversation, that oncological conversation. And there are three areas um, where homeopathy is being used. One, of course, is curat uh, preventative, the other is palliative, and the third would be curative. And any homeopath who is participating in one of those areas doesn't necessarily believe that homeopathy can be used for the other areas. But each area has its practitioners, its medical practitioners, its lay practitioners who are getting great results in their area of expertise. So um, you may find, let's talk about the palliative first because it's the most documented and it's kind of the middle ground of homeopathic, uh, traditional homeopathy and allopathic use of homeopathy. Does that make sense? When we use homeopathy to um, soften side effects, to ease the shock, to ease, well, we've got it here. Um, Dr. Benoit in Strasbourg, France, is one yes. of the most famous homeopaths, yeah. medical homeopaths, who is working in traditional settings, but using homeopathy as a palliative adjunct, meaning he helps with side effects. He helps with the emotional impact of getting the diagnosis. Um, so we have side effects in allopathic care from the chemotherapy substances themselves, we all know, um, nausea and hair loss and inability to receive nutrition, um, exhaustion, the, the list is, is very long. We don't need to go into it. But he's got over 4,000 patients wow. in his practice that have been treated allopathically with chemotherapy drugs and radiation plus homeopathic um, adjuncts to make the journey easier. Um, he's, and this is very interesting. Because he has identified using homeopathic remedies in a non-constitutional way, meaning he doesn't take the entire case. He identifies, this is my understanding of what he does, mm -hmm. he identifies a primary symptom that is distressing the patient. And if it's the first, when, and it's interesting, because it's kind of like the layers of, of acute versus chronic symptomology that we see in a patient anyway. So if the first time that he encounters a homeopath a patient is you have this horrible diagnosis the person goes into complete shock he might give them ignatia he might give them opium he might give them aconite these are great shock remedies and that's where he begins care and it will probably be in low potency 
and he will do it with some repetitious, with, with some repetitions, maybe not in the same way a, can, a constitutional homeopath will say, take this and let the remedy work. Cancer has an urgency to it that I've noticed the practitioners have responded to by, qual by, by tr having it more of a, of a disease-based approach, meaning um, you're in my office, we're looking at a clock that's ticking, so we're going to start using the gentlest medicine we can to help you so that the heavy-duty medicine can do its heavy work without destroying the immune system. So that's one way homeopathy is working in tandem with um, more conventional treatments. Excellent. And um, it is such a complex issue. Everybody has to make the decision <clears throat> how they're going to approach healing through a diagnosis. Absolutely. And uh, with the knowledge of, some people have more knowledge or, or less knowledge about integrative medicine, functional medicine, homeopathic care, mm -hmm. um, nutritional, uh, let medicine, let food be, by, be thy medicine. I mean, right. a, a lot of people are not on that wavelength yet, and, and that's one of the things we would like to get them to. So in the chat, Gabrielle is saying no palliative adjuncts. I'm not really certain, and, and I'm sure she's very emphatic about it because she's a homeopath through and through, and that's going to be the mode of action for her for the, the person to heal in all ways. However, there will be people who will choose chemotherapy. There will be people who will choose other kind, conventional medicines or ozone therapy or whatever it is. And depending on what country you live in, will also depend on what you're surrounded with, what other people are doing, what your knowledge base is. I mean, so, for, sorry. Yes. Very exciting topic. I apologize. Go continue. I'm glad I'm ex it's exciting. Yes, yeah, so so um, when she says no palliative adjunct, I think that Dr. Um, Benoit, he's, what he's actually doing is he is dealing with what's happening on the surface for that individual, what is most evident, whether it is their fear of dying, uh, you know, arsenicum album or aconite, or their anticipation for going to the doctor, gelsimium. I mean, these are, are remedies that homeopaths have in their toolbox and actually help people um, through overcome challenges, overcome difficulty going in for care, um, and, and relax them so that they can do yoga or breathing or get out and walk or not afraid of going in the sun if they have skin cancer. I mean, we have so many fears that are imposed upon us that uh, I think homeopathy helps reduce fear. Okay, you go, go with it. <laughs> okay, um, you know, it's interesting. Um, there are homeopaths that are quite successful doing work with patients who are not doing any chemotherapy. And there are, there, there are doc, medical doctors and homeopaths who are getting cures from this. So as I bring out the palliative slide first, it's because it's the most palatable, most, most acceptable form of a medical situation uh, for cancer care. And I think since we're speaking among homeopaths, this, I can bring in the topic of miasm. Mm -hmm. You know, the cancer miasm has a very specific kind of personality to it. And the whole disease of cancer has a very specific personality to it. And part of the, the miasm is, you know, we're going to fight the good fight. We're heroes of cure. And it's this very almost yang approach to an illness. It, I mean, cancer is just a fascinating illness because there's this desire to look like nothing's happening on the outside. But in the inside... We have cells that are re reproducing unnaturally. And you're never going to get away from the miasm effect on the personality of the person who's suffering from whatever disease it is they have. So when we face the whole idea of a person who is miasmically cancer, or syphilitic, or 
or get or tuberculin their personality of the miasma goes along with their approach to healing mm -hmm. so to say to a cancer patient that you can't do everything actually asks them to be a different miasma can you repeat that last piece again I think asking because of the personality of the cancer miasm to ask a cancer patient not to do everything not to fight the good fight but to choose one type of care mm -hmm. that means they askew every other possible form of cure they it's it goes against their 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 nature. miasmic disposition mm -hmm. it's asking them to be a different person and I think we, I agree that for some of us, I mean, I don't know what I would do, what I would be like if I had the diagnosis. And I thank God I haven't been given one. So I actually have a pact with my sister who I trust um, with my life that this is what I want to do if that ever happens and don't let me go back from it. Because you're not reasonable, you're not rational when you're afraid. So um, I, I recognize that there are doctors, and I'm not advocating anything, any one area over the other. I'm strictly reporting on what's being done worldwide. And Benoit in France is a medical doctor. He lives in a country where homeopathic remedies, I'm told, over 30C are not available. Really? Oh, oh, so, so then what? What do you do in that case? Exactly. What do you do in that case? You work with what's available to you. <laughs> And I, I know that, I mean, I, I was just reading about this recently. And when I was in France, I, I really couldn't get a homeopathic remedy above a 30C. So it's very possible that is true. Um, so they have to make 30Cs work, which means more repetition. They're not going to higher potencies. Whereas um, Grim, Grimmer, who was an American homeopath who had great success with, can with cancer treatment, um, and explored a lot of the cadmiums for cancer care mm -hmm. um, and the the Indians they're doing high potency remedies they're doing low potency um, ad integrate uh, uh, um, intercurrent remedies but often they're going very high potency 10 M's 100 M CMs Grimmer went very high so you work with what you have and we hope for the best now so palliation is a is a very acceptable kind of palatable method of, into, of being able to do homeopathy alongside con conventional care. Um, Benoit is extremely dedicated to his patients and wants them to um, not suffer. And uh, you, you, you can't judge the man for that, even though you might choose to do non-conventional care. So, getting to the convention, getting to the non, getting to the cure with homeopathy question. Should we talk about that next, unless there are more questions on the palliative question? Um, well, we have, we have quite a bit of talking in the chat also from uh, okay. this discussion, which is quite interesting. Um, am I allowed to ask? Yes, we're going to ask. I, I think we're slowly seeing the bottom of your chin. And I know, because my chair's sinking. If you can take me off camera for a second, I can fix my chair. Okay, I'll talk. <laughs> Yay. All right. Uh, her her chair slowly sunk oh, with okay. the with the see, sun. I'm all back. I'm back. You see? Okay. Good. 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 Um, <laughs> so we're we're having this discussion, uh, Giza and Kathy and whoever's listening in there and Fairy Mom about cancer um, being a, I guess a person in conflict or having conflict in their life. Shock. Something has happened. And I assume that means that's initiating the trigger for the cancer to start um, because we all have cancer cells and our immune system is always care taking care of that on a daily basis. Um, however, when it gets to the point where the immune system is not functioning properly, uh, it, it goes out of whack. And... And it may take 10 years to even notice that something is not right. Although with homeopathic care, we should be able to get some hints many years uh, ahead of time. Exactly. So uh, they were talking about what is actually available in France. And 
as you were talking about that, I'm thinking, you know, culture again and cultures and networks. And that if in France, 30C is all that is available, then maybe that is all that is necessary for healing in that community, that um, niche of people who are living in France who are w very much more aware and concerned about their environment, about the foods that they eat, the, about the culture, that the family culture, about their lifestyle and, and being outdoors and in the environment, and, and fighters and revolutionary people. And maybe in their culture, they only n require 30C. Where here in America, where we can't get our kids to eat right, we have total dysfunction uh, of the, the digestive tract and our toxins from pollutants everywhere in the waterways, the air, the soil is all there. And, and every time you take a shower, you're streaming chlorine on your body. I mean, maybe we need higher dose, higher potencies for that reason. Um, and maybe, I don't know, I, I understand in India, of course, they're using a variety of potencies, potencies to address a variety of different uh, conditions and issues in the individual, what is necessary for the individual. So um, th I, that was my little point about culture and necessity and dealing with what we have on hand. You want to comment on that? Um, it's a good lead-in to the uses of low potencies. Um, you know, theoretically, there are people are using low potencies. I mean, they're, the organ, the organotherapeutics are in low potencies. The um, some of the SAR codes that are being used tonically for organ support are being done in low potency, and they're being done in repetition. And in my own practice, I've seen people who really. They, the best indicated remedy, time after time again, doesn't hold, no matter how high the potency, no matter how deep the pathology, no matter how deep um, and deep acting the remedy. And until they've had a little organ support at low potency, they're not, they're not able to take and hold the energy of the remedy. It's kind of like a bag that has holes in it. You can keep filling it with sand, but if the sand's going to keep falling out of the holes, you're never going to get a full bag of sand. Mm -hmm. Um... But it's a nice lead-in to... Can I make uh, a comment here before you lead into the next thing? <clears throat> sure. Um, it is part of the concept of homeopathic thinking, homeopathic philosophy, that homeopathy is not the name of the remedy. It is not the remedy. It is the action, the interaction, the relationship of the individualized selected substance substance with the condition of the human being of the living organism and mm -hmm. that is homeopathy in my mind is is that relationship it is not simply take this for that you have a cold or you know you have um like you were saying before you have a, a, a diagnosis of cancer so you're going to be taking Ruta, and what was the other remedy? Um, We're going to get to that. Don't take oh, that. Don't, don't oh, my I thought. thought we already mentioned it. No, don't okay. steal my thought. Okay, so, so what I'm saying is it's not simply a cut and dry protocol. However, that's what's being done in cancer care. Oh. And that is what's being done in cancer care. Can't, in, mo most of this, from what I'm reading, a lot of the success that we're seeing in large numbers in these Indian clinics where they're seeing thousands of people, mm -hmm. there is a consistent use of remedy over the, over, within the populations of specific pathology in the cancer world. Meaning, Ramakrishna can prescribe, he can tell you what three or four remedies he's going to be using for that for a person with this type of cancer. Lung cancer is going to get like a podium. It's going. There is cancer. There is remedy specific to types of cancer because it addresses an organ system, and and that Correct. has been very useful. Correct. However, however, there doesn't seem to be a lot of deviation from that. Mm -hmm. There are, there seem to be actual prescriptions that can be given across um, 
cultures and across locations from doctor to doctor that will replicate a similar action in the organism to defeat cancer. Now, again, I have I have been a person who's been antibiotic free from the very first day that I had my first homeopathic remedy. I have been very I have I've gotten sick and I've I've had plenty of life. I've lived all over the place. I've had plenty of fun. So I've gotten sick, but I've never needed something that homeopathy couldn't give me. So I'm lucky. People would say that I'm lucky. I think that I'm stubborn. But <laughs> I you're I, stubborn, Lise. I am stubborn. <laughs> I think. That's one of your strengths and one of your weaknesses. Both. <laughs> <laughs> For all of us. But the, po so the, the point is, when someone's looking at a ticking clock, what's, what, is the, what, what needs to be addressed? <laughs> and sometimes we need to keep the patient alive long enough for them to get a cure. Because the underlying, because you get a, get a, maybe you get a cancer situation into remission, and then you have an opportunity to do deep miasmic homeopathic work on them. But you have to stop the clock from ticking. So right. for a, for a, an oncological homeopathic treatment plan um, that takes that into consideration, I consider I, my observations of what they're doing leads me to have a sense of compassion and forgiveness for not sticking to the to the letter of the law of constitutional homeopathy. Because at the very base, we have to give our patients comfort and healing, and sometimes we have to calm them down. Now, Benoit uses homeopathy, and as Debbie knows, and probably some of the viewers here know, if there's homeopathic care for um, emotions, I don't choose homeopathy first. I choose Bach flower essences first. Mm-hmm. Because I don't want to miss out the opportunity to do a homeopathic, deep-acting homeopathic remedy for severe pathology. I don't want to waste my time working with homeopathics for emotions which Bach Blowers can handle very nicely and not interfere with the action of the homeopathic remedy. Mm -hmm. So that would be my personal choice. Um, but Benoit is using a few days of one remedy, a few days of another remedy, and even the Indians are doing the same. The Banerjee's and Ramakrishna are rotating remedies over the course of a week, the course of a few weeks. So, um, just getting back to the low dose homeopathics, this is what Debbie was referring to, is Ruta 6C. Ruta 6C has been shown with and calcium phos in, has been shown in vitro um, studies that it actually makes the telomeres of cells smarter so they learn when to die off. One of the problems, my understanding, and it's very rudimentary, my understanding of the telomeres in a cell is that it's sort of the, and people can correct me, and I, 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 don't, I won't be offended, that that's the expiration date for a cell. It basically, it's the intelligence, inner intelligence of a cell to know when it's done its best work and it needs to, to be recycled. But the cancer cell, with age, the telomeres don't shorten, which seems to be the factor that makes it hard for it to reproduce. They don't shorten, and instead of dying, they mutate because they just keep staying alive and alive. And the Ruta 6C and the calcium phos have actually been shown to um, help uh, a cancer cell know when it's time to go. So it will, they'll be able to, they'll, they'll, they'll die their natural death. Mm -hmm. And so that's been pretty exciting. The Anderson Clinic in Texas is MD, doing a lot MD of great Anderson. work with that. Pardon me? MD Anderson. Mm -hmm. They're doing a lot of great work in verifying the, um, the action of homeopathic remedies on the organism in a, uh, in a biochemic environment where they can examine it under a microscope. And they're making big contributions to our understanding of how homeopathy can be used in cancer care. And because I don't know if we have the luxury to do deep um, constitutional care with the epidemic of cancer that we have. And in a way, if we believe or accept the notion of genus epidemicus, what Ramakrishna and the other Indians have come across, and maybe a little bit Benoit, although he's not focused on cure, he's focused on palliation, um, maybe they've come up with a genus epidemicus for cancer. Uh, I don't know. I don't. I, I don't either. know. That. Well, I, I would think if if you were talking about that, it would be the remedies of carcinosin and 
carcinosin comes in many flavors because they are not just the breast cancer cells, which are the ones that are typically used and known, but there are organ-specific tissue cultures from made into homeopathic remedies. So, are you referring to the carcinosin T58? There's individualized ones as and, well. and there is combination. So yes, it's possible. And I don't know whether this is considered isopathic treatment or whether it would be considered, it probably, a lot of it would be considered truly homeopathic if it fit the symptom picture of the individual. Um, well, as Robin, as Robin Murphy says, isopathy is still homeopathy. Oh. Because if you get stung by a bee, and it just so happens that apis works for you because you're stung by a bee, mm -hmm. the symptoms are similar to bee sting. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> well, they are bee sting. Bee, exactly. So th there's room in the, in the world of similar uh -huh. for identical. Oh, I guess what we're t when we say isopathic, we're actually taking the actual substance and giving mm -hmm. it back as opposed to su a, a substance from elsewhere, you know, that's similar. Is that um, required? Okay. I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. I, I'm not the expert on that. Um, it's Ga Gabrielle is saying, if there's a tendency to nervousness, normally you will find phosphorus. And a Amnon oh. has a comment. Yeah. You need to, I took you off camera, you need to speak, that, that chair is, has chair a again. sinking feeling, and I recommend phosphorus, ah, phosphorus for like, that, for the I didn't chair. hear you, what? I recommend <laughs> phosphorus for the chair, for that sinking <laughs> feeling. No, it's or, one of or, the stools. Or you can use it has a, like it has a podium, hydraulic. you can use like a podium or a gelsimium for the pressure to raise it. Well, let me get it. <laughs> Like, oh, we've had a remedy. Here we go. No, no, you, we don't pop them that easily. <laughs> well, this chair hasn't had a remedy yet, so we're okay. Okay. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, okay. I, I, I won't be you know, there are people who do say, let's put a remedy into the car engine. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I, I, wonder how, I wonder how that would go. <laughs> would it be a metal? I don't know. <laughs> it might be a carbon. <laughs> Or a, a petroleum or something, something to clear. Um, yeah, so so it's great. Thank you for those folks who are talking about different remedies for different um, emotional states in the uh, chat over here. And I thank you for hanging in with us. We've got lots of really high-order remedies, homeopathic remedies that are consistently used for helping with uh, cancer patients. And... I personally feel that if you're assisting the individual to get through each day using the homeopathic remedies, even though it's not absolutely curative, that's okay. I mean, no, and, 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 and I want to go back to a message that I sent out in the broadcast announcement to Homeopathy World Community, and that was by Hippocrates that said, Cure sometimes, treat often, comfort always. And so, and that came to my mind, at least when you spoke about using the batch flower remedies, um, these essence, gentle essences to always give comfort, always touch, always lend a hand, always talk, always uh, um, mirror and reflect that individual's pain and feel that they are being heard. Uh, treating often, what does that mean? It means, I suppose, if you are knowledgeable and you are the best, if you know for sure, and there's that doubt and surety again, you know, um, what is going to make that person feel better and get, get well? Take them off of sugar, you know? That's treating. Treating is saying change your diet. Drink more green tea. I mean, these are good things and, and that's part of treating. And then cure sometimes because it acknowledges our humility as not being the say-so of life and death. Uh, homeopaths who are dealing with thousands of 
cancer patients every day, they do have information that the general public and maybe other people do not have about what they see in their data banks of patients who are going to clinic, getting their remedies, going home, going back to work, taking care of their family. So that information, that is the ability of them to cure. Um, and so the definition of cure probably would need to be defined again for listeners, for people who think it means that my cancer is gone. No, uh, my cancer is not gone. My cancer is probably going to be living, living alongside in a symbiotic relationship, not taking over, but letting the person be me, you know? And, and it's a, it's, I think cancer is a mindset. It is really, that is the battle. It's in your mind. Are you going to be depressed? Are you going to um, feel that life is over for you? Are you going to withdraw from society? Uh, what is it that you are going, how are you going to live? And that is what is difficult for people um, going through their diagnosis. I mean, uh, I recent, recently heard that, you know, uh, someone was given a diagnosis and they're given a time frame of how long they're going to live. And they may either just not make it even a week or a month, or mm -hmm. they may be hanging in there and two, five, ten years later, they're looking back and saying, well, um, my oncologist died and I'm still here. You know, so you're going to hear all of these different stories. Um, I don't know where I went with that, but I just went like, off on a tangent. <laughs> Go ahead, <laughs> pick up. Um, I don't know where to pick up. I was just while you were talking, I um, came across that some a listener sent me an email saying that um, there is no there is no two hundred C in France. They do something with the K potencies, the CKs, but it's um, if you ask a pharmacist, they will never say it's actually. The same thing. So, what is K? I'm not clear on that. Hey, anybody out there in the chat, tell us what K is. Um, in the meantime, tell us um, news about the rest of your slides. We're coming up to 2:15 right here, and I know people are not going to be We've with us the family. whole day. We Have need to talk about the the magazine. It says, got, while oh, you're... Yes. Oh, yes. Okay, I can jump in. Um, uh -huh. we, had, we had a great article, and this goes back to how people are talking about homeopathy. We had a great article uh, that was circling through the forums just since, I think it was published on Monday, uh, about a Fox News article, an internet Fox News article, written about homeopathy's mm -hmm. usefulness in pregnancy and postpartum care. Well, it's good because Fox we're... Fox News. Fox News. Yes, it's going to be up there. It's going to be um, headline news more and more as people are in the community, consumers are clamoring for homeopathy. Do we want to show this gift for the homeopathy world community? Sure, I'm ready to talk about it. Go ahead. We have a colleague whose name is Donna Powers. Her website is Powers of Homeopathy. She's a practitioner and a teacher up in Calgary, Canada, and she's doing a online magazine about homeopathy. Her intention is to bring a homeopathic kit into every home so that people have the ability to work um, on helping their families before anybody even needs to go to the doctor. And her first issue of her magazine, which is a, an, an, a digital magazine that's available through, through iStore, through the iStore iTunes. Um, the first issue was the birth issue. So when Donna heard that we were going to be talking today and the article from, from, from Fox just was published, what a great opportunity to share this magazine. This is a free edition. It's over 150 pages of um, information about, you want to go to the next slide? Can we go to the next slide? There you go. Um, over 150 pages of articles about remedies for pregnancy and labor, um, how to prepare yourself 
and get the most benefit out of your child's first homeopathic visit. And there are case studies about healing autism with homeopathy and much more. This particular issue is available free to readers and listeners and members of homeopathy world community. All you have to do is go to homeopathy first magazine. Go to homeopathyfirstmagazine.com. Right? Forward slash birth. And you can pick up your free issue. Homeopathyfirstmagazine.com. And the, right. do you need to forward, have a slash? Forward slash birth. Birth. Okay, put that on there. Okay. And kit box with homeopathic remedy. Um, Gabrielle, you're asking about a homeopathic remedies. Yes. What what she's uh, saying is Donna and many other homeopaths I know and believe, including myself, have had a philosophy and a desire that every home should have a homeopathic kit. So that little, and, and my actual um, desire, vision, is that homeopathy is taught in elementary school <laughs> so that kids know, oh, you know, they're out in the play, playground and they have a, a real black and blue, a bump, it's not just nothing, and, and they know, oh, I need arnica or I, I have a scrape, well, let's use a little calendula. And, and so just like basic first aid should be common knowledge and starting with elementary school kids, uh, they can bring it home and teach the parents and ask for a kit so that they have it on hand. And it's always great. That's how I actually got started with the many collect, huge collection of remedies that I have. It's like, oh, you want me to get that and that and that and that? Well, I just ended up with a real lot of remedies. Um, so I think that explains to Gabrielle what she meant about a kit in every home. And um, I think if I would like you to help us conclude today's show, if anybody out there has something to contribute, we would like to acknowledge you and, and um, any bit of wisdom or something you want to say. Please tell us, and Lise, um, tell us any concluding remarks or something that you want to let us know about. Thank you very much. Um, this has been a great um, time together. I'm thrilled that we had so many people on the chat. I'm willing to, I'm happy to, I'll keep the chat open if it's possible for a little while. I don't know if that's available. Yes. Um, and I'll keep, I'll stay, I'll keep my eye on the chat if anybody has any further questions or comments. Um, but in summing up, I, I just hope that people um, ex feel that a little more freedom and a little more encouragement to start speaking about homeopathy in integrative circles and not to be self-conscious about it. I think that the idea of homeopathy is becoming more, people are being more curious about it and it's our chance to shine. It's our chance to start s gently and nicely um, correcting misunderstandings of homeopathy and sharing our stories. One of the biggest things that gets the biggest impact is when we tell it, tell people how it worked for us. And okay. we've all got stories. Okay, so so what you're kind of saying to me is, I'm, I'm thrilled to be doing the show again. The Health In Show uh, was off the air for about a year. And um, coming back live is very, very encouraging and exciting and exhilarating for you out there as listeners on audio, video, wherever you are. And for me to be able to share, I get very, very passionate and excited about news, about world news, and I, I like to talk about it. And I, I can talk about it to myself in my head, or I can talk about it with other people. Do a political show. I would do a political show. And um, I think, Lise, you're the one who said, let's get back on the air, but let's make it about the folks out there who are practicing homeopathy in their locale. Let's mm -hmm. give them a platform, a forum, a voice. Let's let them say, contact us. Come, call us. And, and say, I have something I want to share with you. I want to tell you what's happening in my, in my community. I want to let other people know what I'm doing to inform 
my family, my friends, my neighbors, my um, my education, the, my the schools in my neighborhood, or um, the clinics, or contacting other physicians. W what is it that you are doing? And we want to hear about it. If, if you have a study group or something, um, Maggie says she likes the idea. Yay! Thank you so much. Um, I also uh, found out what the K means. K in potency refers to the method of manufacturing known as the Korsakovian method, which is Russian, obviously. And it, this method dilutes the homeopathic preparation of the substance at a, at a rate of one part of the previous dilution with 99 parts of solvent. So that's one to 100. That would be our C's, would it not? Is, I, I think it probably would be considered. Well, I think there's a method where um, you you put the the solution in the the vial and then you just dump it out and you add more liquid and you dump it you know after shake succussing, dump it out and add more liquid as opposed to each time you dilute and succuss it's in a fresh bottle. I think that is also something. I'll we need you, to I, have an expert in, in, in uh, manufacturing come on. I agree with you. I, I have a tendency to talk to pharmacists because I find them fascinating. Um, and a lot of potencies over 200, I'm understanding, are Corsicovian anyway. Mm -hmm. Because you're just not, because it's a faster way to make um, the preparations. Anyway, but it's a, that's a very heady um, scientific conversation, a lot of math. A lot of math. We, we don't want to leave. Yes, I want to leave with math. I love <laughs> math. Because so, yes, Debbie was saying that um, this little bit of that I did today was sort of ha homeopathic ha happenings from Florida. Mm -hmm. um, anybody in any state who wants to say homeopathic happenings from Connecticut, from Arizona, I say De call Deb and see if she'll do a show. Or call Lise. Oh, call me. Yeah, because you're you're there. You're we're all a team. We're working we're together. All, we're all the same Scooby. <laughs> Scooby Doopy Doo. <laughs> okay, and thank you everyone out there. And these shows are going to be archived on the website right here um, under on on demand. On, on demand under health end. On demand. And I don't know who said that the show was off the air. I've been hearing it every day, <laughs> every day. You should be a really, you should be certified. I there mean, might be a remedy for been, that. It's been replaying and replaying no. all year long. That's true. It's true. So one of the things that Amnon does as the um, producer of Nissan Communications is there's 24 hour shows going. So he's replaying our old shows constantly. So it never really left the air. Um, but it was just old news to right. some of us. And it helps it sink in, doesn't it, mm -hmm. when you replay? That's why you knew about Jill Simeon, Lycopodium, and well, Phosphorus. You know, <laughs> Deb, one thing. Can I just say one more thing? Please do. Um, we have study groups all throughout um, the country that um, I don't think people know about. And um, I'd like to ask if I could post the Florida study groups uh, somewhere on the site so people and then we can start creating a study group sort of um, forum if possible or chat or thread so that people can share their experiences of having study groups because that's how people used to study homeopathy before the schools were back on the scene explain that again you want a what uh, a place on the site where we can have, um, where I can, I'd like to list where the, where the Florida homeopathic study groups are so that people can find that out on our page. Maybe we can put that on down. homeopathy world community. We can have it sure. on your, after have the your, show. After the show, can we place that? Because you'll, or I can add it as a slide to the PowerPoint. Um, the, the slides are done. So, what we can do, Fine. the slides are done. What we can do is we on our announcement page link with all of your bio. We can have all that information. Sounds great. Um, yep. I know there's somebody from Gainesville right now who may be listening who's saying, Lise didn't say anything about the study groups. Oh, well, there's always something to say. We'll exactly. add it the next time. And so, folks, don't forget Homeopathy First magazine 
slash birth and pick up your free issue, 150 pages. Thank you, Donna Powers in Calgary, Canada. She is also going to be partnering here with doing shows with us. And hope- I want to wave to Dr. Deepak Sharma in India because I miss him so much. And I know he's probably out there lecturing and doing pharmaceutical work and homeopathic work and great stuff. Anybody else you want to wave hello to? Your mom? No. <laughs> See everybody at the conference in Florida this weekend at uh, in Lake Nona. Wonderful. Thank you, Amnon. Thank you. Light and love until the next time. Hi, me up in World Dad. Community. Thanks, Bye-bye. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. Our weekly lineup of call-in programs includes Computers 2K Now with Omnon Nissan, My Life, My Will with Gisela DiCarlo, The Tanya Love Show, Help Then with Debbie Brooke, Breaking Free with Marilyn Shannon, Triangle Be Well with Howard Jacobson, Lunch and Learn with Rabbi Yisrael Cutler, Lessons of Vietnam with NCVVI members, Parent Dome with Ryan Miller, Current Affairs with Amnon Nissan. And if you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section on nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Atomos.com, makers of quality video recorders and converters, CarolinaApparel.com, and DeltaForce.net.